Hi there, welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer, this is A Country Life, and I am in my kitchen, which is my favorite room in the house. <laughs> I am just getting all the suppers ready for my family. If you like meal inspiration and you like to see not just the meal that's happening, but a little bit of what's going on in the household usually, kind of that day or around that time that I'm cooking, this is the channel for you. I'd love to have you subscribe and come along and see all the things that we make in my country kitchen. Tonight we're going to be having fish tacos and this is a meal that can be done so many different ways. If you've ever had fish tacos at a restaurant you know well, hopefully you know that they're absolutely delicious, but every restaurant does it just a little bit differently. And here at home, one of the things that I have done, we've done it with fresh fish and then deep fry our own fre fresh fish. But another way that we can do this that's really, really easy is to just use fish sticks or just fish patties frozen. It works really well, it's really fast, it gives, for me anyway, I love fish tacos. It gives me the fish taco flavor without too much fuss. The first thing that I'm gonna be doing here, I have some red onion and I have some red wine. So I'm just gonna put that in this bowl and sprinkle some salt over it, push those aside and just let them rest until it's time for supper. You have something to tell the camera? So like just one minute ago, these cookies were cookie dough. <laughs> and then the next second I came out here and they're cookies. <laughs> It's like I'm magic or something. <laughs> if you have been following along here with some of my uh, day in the life vlogs, we are getting ready to plant a five acre cranberry bed. And there's a lot of work that goes into getting that ready to plant and another thing. So I've already showed the cutting of the cranberry vines in a live video, which you can go check that one out. I've also shared how we rake them all up, load them on the trailer, get them up here and water them, you know, for weeks and weeks here. And now next week, Saturday. So today is Thursday, not in two days, but a week from today, we're gonna be planting. And today's big project is to put in the drain tile. Drain tile is kind of like black plastic culverts with, um, with holes drilled in them. And then it's covered with sort of like a cheesecloth style fabric all the way. Those are just to help with drainage because cranberries, they like to be damp, but they don't want to be swimming in water either. So drain tile is what helps to keep the bed evenly, uh, keep the moisture as even as possible in each individual cranberry bed. Okay, there's your cranberry lesson for today. I hope I explained it well enough. What I'm saying here is that it's 3.30 right now, and so I'm just getting a few of the things ready. I'm also going to pull out some coleslaw, and I have just a smidge of an already prepared coleslaw uh, dressing in the fridge. I'm gonna use up the last of that, put it over some of the like cabbage slaw mix, and then I'm also gonna pull out some cilantro, wash that up, get that minced up here. We're gonna get those things ready, so that when we come in because later when we come in we're actually why we're not doing it yet is because we're waiting for Sam to get home from school because he goes um, we mainly homeschool but he does go to a local high school for a few classes in the afternoon so we're waiting for him to come home and when he gets home then we're gonna get this um, project started and I know when I come in I'm gonna be hungry and so is everybody else so I'm just trying to get supper going on the early side here This is sort of like making pickled onions, basically just like a really, really quick way to do some pickled onions. When I put together the like toppings for fish tacos, I really don't need a lot because these aren't really things that little kids tend to like too much. So they're probably just gonna do the fish sticks. Ooh, there's not very much coleslaw mix in here. All right, since there wasn't enough, I'm just going to make some really quick coleslaw dressing, dressing with some Miracle Whip and just a little bit of lemon juice there. And my bowl <laughs> is not big enough, is it? This is what happens when I find myself trying to do things too quick because I've got too many things on my mind right now. I 
start to do things sloppy like that. And if I wasn't filming for YouTube, nobody would ever know because I will just get it all cleaned up. <laughs> but just being real here for you guys, not everything always goes perfect and how you want it to go. Sometimes you make a mess. Mm, that tastes just right. I like that. It's not too strong. Okay, the last thing is to wash up some cilantro. And now I do want to mention, I mentioned, whoops, hold on to the camera, Jennifer. I mentioned in my grocery haul that, you know, I'm really the only one that eats cilantro and so it tends to go to waste. And a lot of you had chimed in with some different ideas. One person said, like, chop it up and then freeze it and then you could just bring it out for, uh, you know, when you need it. Another person had mentioned drying it and then putting it into a little container. And I feel like there was another good idea too that has escaped me now. But anyway, I thought all those were really great ideas. And so maybe I'll get to that. Because <laughs> literally that is how much I'm gonna wash up. I'm also working on getting some chocolate chip cookies into the oven here as fast as I possibly can. I literally have about 10 minutes, I think, before Sam comes home. I'm making the recipe that is in my cookbook. This is Warren's favorite chocolate chip cookie dough recipe. It's an all shortening recipe. If you really wanna be wild and crazy, feel free to substitute half of the shortening with butter. I do do that on occasion. The last two times I made the regular Nestle Toll House recipe, which is what I grew up on, the all butter recipe. And so I just thought it was time that I make his favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe. We're in now and yeah, we got that tile plowed in and I am burning, oh boy. Okay, so this is what I do. I just quick for making, whenever I wanna do like corn tortillas, I just turn on my gas stove and char up, oh, that one can go a little bit longer. <laughs> It's kind of one of those time sensitive things. I don't normally try to talk through it. I did make just another box of this macaroni and cheese. I made one the other day and the kids just thought that was the greatest thing. So I made that to go along with supper tonight. There we go, perfect. And then I'm just gonna put it underneath to keep it warm under the paper towel here. I do have some potato chips and some peaches, a little bit of cheese and all the fixings. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off before I really burn something. Yes, there's the plenty because I think you're not gonna eat the only ones. And I've got the... Mom, Mom thank you, supper. Okay, you're welcome. And it kind of pickles heck? them a little. <laughs> it sounds sus. It sounds sus. That's a new way of saying it. Suspicious, mm-hmm. What's my name about food? Cilantro. Oh, you want to show yours too? That's Joe's plate. It's not working. It's working just fine. No, it's upside down. It's not working. It's upside down, I know. For tonight's supper, we are going to be having dump and bake meatball casserole. Well, this is probably a recipe that you've seen all over the place. Um, I mean, I've seen a number of different families make this on family channels. This just happens to be the one that I printed off and I'm just following it the way it says. So I don't know where I got this. No, there is not a note on here. But anyway, the author is Blair, so thank you, Blair. <laughs> I thought I had a full pound of rotini, but I didn't. So I'm just using this penne pasta here. And then it called for 24 ounces. Oh, I just said I was making it just the way it said, and I already said I'm using the wrong pasta. <laughs> okay, um, it called for 24 ounces of marinara sauce and then three more cups of water. So that's a total of six cups. And my homemade pasta sauce that I had frozen was about four cups. So I just filled this up to the six cup line and I'm hoping that that's gonna be fine that I have more sauce and a little less water. I have a bag of meatballs from Aldi and we went with the Italian style ones. And then it does call for two cups of shredded mozzarella cheese. I shredded up two blocks. So this is actually four cups and I'll, pr 
I'm not going to use the whole four, but definitely I figured we were going to need more than two cups. Also over here I have a container of Parmesan cheese, and I'm just going to mix in a small handful of this. Um, I have some people in my family are not super big on ah! the... Thanks, Sam. <laughs> are not super big on the stinky feet kind of cheese. Um, and although I don't think Parmesan is a stinky feet cheese, some people do. So, all right, so just a little bit of the Parmesan cheese. I also see it calls for a 14 ounce bag of meatballs. Mine is 32 ounces, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna use the whole thing or not. We'll see when I, as I dump them in how it goes. Yep, I just dumped them all in. Okay, so we are gonna stir it up. I would say important would be to make sure that all of the pasta is submerged in the sauce and water mixture. I mean, that's it, guys. That's, if you call, consider water an ingredient, so far this has four ingredients. <laughs> It's going to be foiled anyway, so I think the steam will be fine, even if a noodle is not quite all the way under. Well, the recipe did call for salting to taste. I'm going to use this Italian seasoning, which does have salt as a number one ingredient. And so I just thought, I think this is going to add some really good flavor to the dish. At this point, I'm going to cover it very tightly with foil and put it in the oven at 425 degrees for 35 minutes. After 35 minutes, the noodles were cooked just perfectly. I guess I tried one and it, it seemed good. So I'm going to go with it here. Now I'm just going to top this with some mozzarella cheese and a little Parmesan cheese. Put it back into the oven for about 10 minutes or so just until the cheese is melty. I'm just going to set the put the tin foil back over it and let it uh, continue to kind of heat through and let the pasta just soak up a little bit more of the juice before we serve it. Today I brought up two pounds of ground venison. I got that uh, frying up. I didn't get any onion into it today. I guess I just was kind of busy doing homeschool and stuff like that and frying meat and I forgot to put the onion in. Anyway, I'll still add that in. But I have some of the venison is left in my Dutch oven and I brought some of it out over here. I'm gonna make these into two different things. So over here, I'm gonna make hug and kiss soup. This recipe is in my cookbook here. Look at that. I've already, <laughs> I already have wrinkly pages from making things so many times out of here because this is just a standard recipe in our house. Um, if you have not gotten my cookbook yet, I do have, my new shipment has come in and I have plenty available at this point. And the information will be in the description box below if you'd like to order one. This meat over here, I'm going to try a new recipe and it is called Beef and Bean Crescent Pie and it is from this particular issue of Taste of Homes Quick Cooking. This is from January, February 2003. I will link this recipe. I'm sure it is online at their website. I will link this recipe um, because I'm not gonna get the whole thing made today. Really what I did is I just took out half of my ground beef which is only a pound and I'm going to put in taco seasoning so I make my own taco seasoning here and two tablespoons is equal to a packet and then I'm going to put one third cup of salsa in here. I'm also going to add in a half cup of refried beans into this and then I'm going to put the cover on and pop it in the fridge until probably tomorrow or the next day when I'm ready to make this whole meal for supper. If you're like me and you like to save on dishes, oftentimes if I have to measure out an amount of something, sometimes I just pull out the measuring cup, I look at it and I go, okay, is that how much I put in? And it just kind of saves on dishes.
Now that the taco meat mixture is finished up for the bean and beef crescent pie, I'm gonna get out all my vegetables and stop and start chopping those up for the soup. Now that the vegetables are in, I'm gonna put in two cups of water, two teaspoons of salt, a half teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of beef bouillon, a couple pieces of bay leaf. I'm gonna bring this to a boil now and let the vegetables, where is my spoon? Just let all the vegetables cook down until they're soft. And then I'm gonna add in one quart of tomato juice. So this is from last uh, garden season. And my tomato juice, I actually, it's a little bit like a V8 juice in a sense because when I cook the tomatoes down, I put onions in it, celery, sometimes a half of a green pepper if I, you know, just if I feel like it. I put some carrots in there, uh, just kind of a variety of vegetables. And then when I run it through my food mill, that takes out all the big chunks and I'm left with a tomato juice that is uh, just nicely seasoned. And so that's what I do. If you like chunks of tomatoes, you can use like a 32 ounce or whatever it is now. I think it's a 29 ounce can of tomatoes. You could do, if you like it thicker, you could do crushed tomatoes. Anyway, this is what I use is home canned tomato juice. Just last minute, I decided that I would share this meal as well with you all. So tonight we're gonna to be having pork chops, um, like breaded and seasoned pork chops. I did make some quick buttered noodles. We're having some leftover potato salad from the weekend and we're having sliced cucumbers. So nothing too major, but the pork chops do take a little time. Here's my system for pork chops. I have some egg and then I have some breadcrumbs. So these are the bread crumbs that I just picked up at Aldi. And then I seasoned those with both this garlic and herb from Aldi and this steakhouse seasoning, which I think came from Dollar Tree, if I'm not mistaken. And I just seasoned up the bread crumbs, dipped my meat in the egg, and then back and forth here. Whoops, I gotta go. Okay, I'm back. I just had to quick transfer this one over. So what I've been doing then, and then I put some oil in my cast iron, and I am just getting them really, really brown, which is about, oh, two, three, four. You know, as you go on, it's a little, it's not quite as long because the pan gets hotter and hotter and hotter. Anywhere from two to four minutes on each side, and then I'm transferring them over to this cookie sheet here. I'm going to put these in the oven at 350 degrees basically until they're done. I haven't taken a reading yet, but as soon as I take a reading, I'll let you know what their um, internal temp is right now. And then I just need to um, get them up to, I have to peek, but I think it's 145 for pork, but I'm gonna just look at my thermometer quick. I did make a little bit of butter noodles. Really only Peter and Maria are gonna wanna have that. And like I said, we're gonna serve this up with some potato salad as well. If you do a lot of frying in the, in the house, one of these little splatter guards is so nice to have. They have them. This set, actually, I picked up at Aldi. See, it's the Crofton brand. It was a two-pack, I want to say, for around around $7 or something, maybe even less than that. It's a smaller one I ended up giving to Nick because he saw me using this big one. He's like, wow, that really saves um, on splattering all over. And he does a lot of, like, fried duck and venison steak and stuff like that. So before I had these in the oven, I checked the temp and they were all registering right around 125 to 130. And I really wanted them to register at least 145, maybe even all the way up to 160 would be okay. So I checked the temp and everything is registering right around 158 to 160 degrees. I am gonna throw some foil over this, tent it for about just three minutes, and then we are going to um, plate this up, have some supper. You know how when you fry meat like that, when you're just trying to really get a good like crunch or sear on some meat, it gets kind of smoky in the house. <laughs> well, let me show you something. This is that air purifier that I had gotten. And I mean, it was sent to me, I got it for free. But, um, you know, I always was kind of like, well, is it working or is it not working? It was always showing that our air quality was um, excellent 
or I guess a couple times it showed good, but I walked by it before. I'm like, red? I've never seen red 306 or 305 now. Normally this number on here is reading around anywhere from like 4 to 12 is the normal number. So I guess, yes, it is really, really registering the air quality, which is very, very poor in the house right now. I mean, I knew that. This didn't have to tell it to me. I already knew it, but it was kind of interesting to see that. Tonight, I've got the microwave going. <laughs> I was not gonna film tonight for you guys, but I did wanna just pop in here and just say to you, you know what, we're having leftovers tonight. There's nothing wrong with eating up what's in the refrigerator, and so we are going to eat the pork chops that are left over from last night's supper. I have those at like 80% power warming in the microwave. I also have barbecue left over from the weekend when we did all the planting, the cranberry vine planting. So we're gonna do that, and then, when I made potato salad over the weekend, I cooked up all of the red potatoes, but I didn't use all of them. So I'm just frying up some red potatoes for supper tonight. And it's really easy and going fast because they're already pre-cooked. And then I have some broccoli here that we're gonna have with some ranch dip. And then I have some oranges sliced up that we're gonna have. And that is going to be it for Tuesday night supper. <laughs>